Okay, I just sat down. I actually wasn't planning on on starting to record yet. I was going to do some stuff, but I just I just started up the game. I got the Moon Castle, the the Litho Castle, the sand because it's not sand. It's like li Litho Litho stuff, <laughs> Litho Strat Street, whatever. The the, the 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 Moon Castle. It's back. I haven't seen that thing in in like like a year of the past several versions of the game that this the thing just totally disappeared supposedly it has a 1 in 40 chance of showing up but it it I've started the game a whole hell of a lot more than 40 times uh, without seeing it and it it's not a myth the moon castle is not a myth it does exist. I have here like you know, like photographic, videographic evidence of it. That it does exist. So I still like sharing that with you. Yeah, okay, we got some annoying noises happening. Oh, does Chatterer have Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe maybe does did the the, the coming the great advent of the moon castle is this what is this is this the the cost of of this gift was the coming of the moon castle and actually an omen it's gone man everything is gone is it still looks like it's there but make no mistake it is gone um you know what i think we need, oh man jeb jeb Jeb, no! Jeb's got two. Um. Oh, it's sad. Okay, okay. Well, I think we're just going to have to cease recording for a bit. I'm going to have to uh, work something out. Maybe uninstall a couple of the mods that I just installed. <laughs> See how this works. What's going on over here? Weird stuff, man. The hell. Okay, I'm back. Uh, Kerbin is back. It, it appears to be working. I had this mod that was supposed to give you the various science alerts and tell you what kind of uh, science experiments are available. But as I was contemplating, maybe actually doing this uh, one of these career modes. Maybe not recording it. Maybe just kind of like my spare time. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and also, after I got all excited about seeing the Moon Castle, uh, after I exited the game and, you know, started uh, disabling mods one at a time, I saw the Moon Castle a second time. Like, twice. Like, I saw it two out of three times that I started the game up. And I know that previously, uh, the guy doing the, the toolbar has done a, a, a special Easter egg thing. I, okay, I'm just going to say I strongly suspect that maybe the, the toolbar is, is going and, and enabling the moon castle. Because I, I definitely had not seen that thing in a long, long, long time. Anyway, that is neither here nor there. Here we are. Uh, I'm starting to add... I've got my, I've got my new... My new... Um, uh, my, my customized nav ball there. We've got the chatterer going. He's chattering. We've got the... You can see Bill Kerman, he's got his, his modified uh, internal cockpit parts. So, yeah, we're, we're going and starting to add, uh, yeah, add, add mods back in. Still no parts mods. Still just UI and graphics improvements. So, the agenda for today is I want to demonstrate a re-entry and landing with both of these vehicles. Um... I started looking at this after the after the, the tor how torturously difficult it was to dock this thing, which I don't know. Maybe it's just my own incompetence. <laughs> it's very likely it was my own incompetence. But also, in previous testing of the Talon uh, single stage to orbit vehicle. I think I'd done previous testing with a similarly heavy payload. It's about as much as I expect it could do without, you know, putting any kind of boosters, slinging those underneath the wings. But I had gone to a lower orbit previously, uh, whenever I, I was testing it. And, and see, look what this thing's got. See, RCS juice, we've got about two-thirds of our remaining RCS juice. I suppose I should call it monopropellant. That'd be slightly more dignified. 
our fuel. We're, we're kind of gasping at vapors here, dudes. I, I am not entirely certain that the Talon has enough monopropellant and liquid fuel and oxidizer to get itself back down to Kerbin out of orbit. That's a, that's a little bit of a problem. So uh, what I'm going to do first, while I'm thinking of it, we're going to re reload this thing. Let's give it a full tank of monopropellant. This uh, station, it doesn't need all this monopropellant anyways. <laughs> it's got hun hundreds, hundreds of units more than it needs. And similarly, um, the tail chaser does not need all this fuel. You see, we've still got yeah, almost, uh, its monopropellant tanks are almost completely full. We've got a respectable amount of fuel in there. Uh, let's think, how much of this do I want to do? Do I want to give him... Yeah, okay, yeah, let's give him all of this stuff here. Let's go. Let's empty out that fuel tank. Okay, let me see another thing I need to do while I'm thinking of this in order to balance this vehicle out if you one of the reasons why i say that the tail chaser is not quite newbie friendly for whenever for a re-entry and landing is that if you just allow the the fuel to drain as it goes then you'll be it's when you when it comes time to do a landing you'll have fuel in this back tank and none in front and it could become tail heavy and go out of control so we'll just do it like that. We'll evenly distribute our fuel and oxidizer throughout the length of the vehicle. And that should work just fine. That'll be enough. Of course it'll be enough for the Talon. Why wouldn't it be? Ha! I suppose if nothing else, we could take that LVN and dock that to the butt end of the Talon and use that. It'd be much more efficient. Of course, there'd be absolutely no point in having brought the thing up into orbit in the first place. But, you know, it would work. <laughs> Undock. Thank you. All right, we are controlling from here, right? Good. Sometimes you undock and it decides that you want to do the other vehicle. Okay. Jet gently away from the station. Bye-bye, station. Double check. Just I just had a bad moment where I thought maybe I would have forgotten to get those two Kerbals out of there. <laughs> no, no, no. They're okay. It's all fine. Okay, so we're still doing our liquid fuel. I think actually we want to tail chaser one to s stage when turn on my mono propellant engines. Let's use those. Let's see which. Okay, yeah, yeah. Action group two turns off the yeah these the main engines those little radial Rocco Max jobs. Okay, thrusting away. I want to drop my periapsis. Down to, let's call it down to 80 kilometers. Bye bye, oaf. Have a good time. <laughs> I'll briefly demonstrate one other thing that I've got going on here. Let me see, which key is it to center this thing? Okay, check this out. We have head tracking, and people, uh, longtime followers of the channel, know that I sometimes I dabble in these other flight sims. Uh, I've got them called Track IR, which may be new to some Kerbal Space Program players. I've got a device attached to my hat, and it uh, has reflectors, and the reflectors reflect off the. the it's got an infrared camera, which is attached, uh, which sits on top of my monitor, very much like a webcam. And so the computer knows what direction I'm pointing my head. I want to look left, and I turn my head left. Look right, turn my head right. And this incredibly awesome internal vehicle view, uh, in cockpit view, just just uh, just got this mod today. I was talking to the, the guy in the forum thread, uh, giving giving him some positive feedback on that, as well as a couple things that could be changed. Oh, I love it! I love this thing so much. Oh, it's doing that weird thing again. You see, we've got the backwards numbers in the IVA nav ball. I've, sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. I have not yet figured that out. Anyway, yeah, this, this, guy, this looks extremely cool. However, uh, I am not intending to do that in this video. I, I do want to 
get better at, you know, and become proficient at flying these vehicles from the in-cockpit view. Uh, but I think a lot of the learning process and, you know, learning what, the things that I have to do differently, a lot of that has to happen kind of off screen. It might, it might be, honestly, it might be kind of annoying and sickening <laughs> for people to actually have to watch the learning process of doing that. Because, you know, doing things in the cockpit and Kerbal Space Program is um, different, different from all these other flight sims. 80.4, definitely close enough for our purposes. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's start thinking about how to do, um, how to do this re-entry. I'm actually, I want to get over here pretty close to this, you know, this big bay, what it, you know, and somewhere around there, I'm going to burn retrograde, and I want to put, you know, pretty much just just like aiming the reentry for a, a capsule. I want to put my 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 projected path into the water a little bit past Kerbal Space Center. In retrograde, and throttle up. Yeah, this is something I've only only flown the the, the re-entry and landing in in the development of this vehicle. I've only done this like a few times, like two or three times. I want that path to be about even with those islands there. About right there. That's good. Uh, I'm far from uh, an expert and old hand at it, since you know every single vehicle is is different. They all behave differently. You know what, I tell you what, I want all of my engines running at this point, because if we do need thrust, again, I'll want a lot of it, even though we've only have just a few seconds of monopropellant remaining. Okay, yeah, this vehicle, just the, the few times that I have gone and, and attempted the, the re-entry, the landing, uh, this is not a lot of wing area, even though I, I did supplement it by trying to make it a true lifting body. The, I mean, the new parts, they, these have a, a lift factor in stock, in stock KSP, you know, FAR, the, and uh, so we, we added some more wing panels to that. But still, this vehicle does have some pretty high wing loading and not a lot of pitch authority. Um, it's not much of a glider, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, here we are hitting atmosphere. There's that path already starting to steepen up some. Um, I think we actually don't want to hit the brakes so much. Let's keep our nose just slightly above the direction of travel so as not to slow down too much. Okay, and let the SAS handle this part, even though we barely have any atmosphere yet. Jebediah does appear totally thrilled, so you know that's good. <laughs> if we're if we were doing this in the, in the in the larger scale with deadly reentry, then you know and we, uh, having pitch control and having to to manage the the temperature and having to do S turns in order to continue braking without climbing too high or, or dropping too low, that would all be kind of exciting. But again, yeah. The uh, stock aerodynamics here, so it's pretty. We can pretty much just drop straight in with impunity. Let's actually let's do some thrusting with the engine right now. Put it right out about like that. And we'll slow down some more as we go. All right, there's some re-entry effects. Always a crowd pleaser. G-forces start to pick up. We accelerate again. At this point. Yeah, monopropellant is now gone. So even though, yeah, we're thrusting, we're still... Still slowing down in a hurry, coming up on three Gs. Pitch control getting kind of kind of dicey. Wee! There, let's pitch back some. Add some more. And some more G forces. Okay, let's actually change our trim. 
shoulder trim right about at the halfway mark. We can adjust that as required after that. Uh, and actually, let's do a little bit of a left turn. Go line up over there. Whoop, whoop. Kind of. We're okay. I think we've... Hang on. SAS back on. I think we still... Yeah, we still got an aft CG here. No, um... Okay, that's better. That's better. Okay. And turn that back off. Uh, we are definitely landing short here, guys. Let's see if we can fix this problem. Okay, very slowly coming up. I was totally wrong about not needing all that fuel. I was totally wrong about aiming this whole re-entry. Starting to act, and act slightly tail heavy again. But can we get a little bit of a climb going? We're leveling out, and now we're in a climb. So that's good. We try to extend our range as much as possible. Go fix that balance. And burn every last bit of fuel. And there's every last bit of fuel. Okay. But it's looking like we sh maybe should be able to make it. Throttle to zero. Okay, let's set our trim back even further. Like almost all the way back, so we still have some pitch authority. Actually, that's too much because we need to be able to level this thing out. It's looking really iffy. Okay, so we will be able to make it on to. Whoops! Hang on, hang on. Don't do that. You're getting kind of, kind of squirrely. I was trying to talk. Yeah, so we'll definitely will make it to to Kerbal Space Center. Uh, but it's looking like the runway, maybe, maybe not. Ah, see, we've got some of the wind sound effects from the chatterer. I think maybe I actually need to turn those down some. Yeah, I'm not going to try for the runway. I'm actually going to land. It's kind of parallel-ish out over here. Yeah, so... I could... Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, the, the root mistake here was I misjudged how much this, this vehicle was going to slow down in, in the re-entry. Okay, so now we're descending too fast. So we'll start pitching back some more. Now, looking at that vertical speed needle, I want to get that less than 10 meters per second. But at the same time, I don't want to slow down too much whenever I'm, you know, several meters up. Okay, pitch back more, pitch back more, pitch back more. Oh, that was scary. I almost waited too long. <laughs> and on the brakes. Screech. Stop. All right. Jebediah, you pleased? Every last bit of fuel is gone. <laughs> but it works. Here, let me turn this down while I'm thinking of it. Uh, here, let's cut this stuff in half like that, huh? The breath, I actually don't want to hear that at all. Good. Okay, cool. Well, it, it works. So so hopefully in the, in, the, in the video and watching it, you see some stuff that went right, some stuff that went wrong. You can learn from the mistakes, be inspired by the good stuff. Um, and yeah, and I already made the, the craft file available for people. You want to try it out for, for yourself. It, it just, it'll just take more practice running this vehicle more times to learn uh, how, how to accurately aim the D orbit. That's all I mean. I'm, all I'm lacking. Let's recover that vessel. And let's go back to the Talon. And we want to do pretty much the similar thing.